What's up guys? A little bit different video for you today. So we're going to go over our budget friendly bump helmet setup. Um, so this one I have here in front of me, this is our buddy Charles, does a lot of the videoing and camera work for us. Um, this one is slightly different than mine. What isn't different is the inside, so the way this one is set up. I think this is basically a knockoff ops core helmet. So my helmet, the only real difference is it's kind of vented here at the top. So you're going to see these little vent diamonds throughout the helmet. Now, since making this video, I have been able to find my actual bump helmet setup, uh, the exact link to that one on Amazon. So I'm going to link both the non-vented and the vented version in the description below for this video. The reason I really like this bump and these knockoff ops core bumps is because they do have the knockoff ops core ratchet system. So this tightens on your head. It's got a little bit of a, like a plastic foundation support system built into this and when you start tightening the ratchet system that also tightens around the circumference of your head and gives you a more lockdown feel um, there is a way if you already have a bump helmet that doesn't have this system that you can actually add this ratchet system into that helmet i believe it's about forty dollars we're also going to link that in the description below with this other one that i have found for about the same price that is more like the team windy type of ratchet system so guys i've been doing a lot of not a lot of research necessarily but a lot of experimenting testing buying with a lot of this knockoff stuff to see what would work for the money and what will actually save you some money so my bump i've got three helmets i've got a hard-headed veterans bump here the orange one i've got a black multicam hard-headed veterans ballistic and then I got a clay surplus CVC conversion helmet here. This is also a ballistically rated helmet. Um, but my favorite out of all of them that fits the best is my knockoff bump helmet that somebody gave me, which is pretty much exactly the same thing as this, that I spray painted and then set up for a night vision unit. Um, this has everything I want on it and it fits the best with the combination of things that I have put together on it. Now, everything we're going to be putting on this helmet today is a knockoff version of the real thing. So the real thing is by far a better, a more superior, better warranty, and just a better overall product. But to get started and what works for most people, because most people aren't true operators, I myself am not, you all see that we do run a lot of stuff, we do shoot a lot, and this tends to work for me. So one thing I could say right now is I have bought three knockoff G24 mounts. These are normally about $400, give or take a little bit more, depending on where you find them, for a real G uh, Wilcox G24. I have been getting these for about $89 off of eBay. I have now have three of them, and I run my $9,000 RNVG unit using this system. The only thing is, they tend to loosen up a little bit. So I have had to tighten these uh, down just to give a little bit more tension where I wanted it. And that's not an everyday thing. That's like a once every couple of months thing. If I put some Loctite in it, I probably would never have to tighten it again. But moving forward, we're gonna show you how much you can put into this helmet and to get it set up pretty dang identical to this right here, okay? So first things first we did the different padding system so what we did was we took out all these real stiff knockoff ops core padding now i believe my buddy chase has the exact ops core knockoff or he has the real ops core bump helmet that mine replicates so his padding system looks like the real version of this the real ops core pads are a lot nicer feel to them these are really stiff backed and they don't give you much flex support when you tighten this helmet down on your head so we have taken all five pads that are removable outside of this helmet. So we got all the Velcro still already prefabbed into this helmet from the factory. And the first thing I started doing was taking these little two pads and lining the top. So I lined it all the way with that previous Velcro. I can fit three there. And then if I hold the Velcro right, right here, which I would normally put Velcro in between these sections that it's missing in so that I could get a more secure fit with that padding. 
we did that right there. And then we put two in the side here. So that way you have all four sides fixed in your head. Now the only things I'm not going to put on right now are these two front and back pads. What I did with the back, I ran it across the back of the head strap up here. And then this really nice front one, it's actually really cool because you can bend this around this opening here. So you can put this right around the front of the padding here. It kind of locks it in really well. And I tell you what, that is probably the most important pad because when that thing starts ratcheting down on your head, I actually have a piece of shrapnel still stuck in my forehead I need to get removed. So that right there is exactly where that rests and starts tightening on. So this pad is the most important one for me because it really gives me some cushion when that's tightening down. Crazy story, that'll be saved for a different day. <laughs> All right, so we got majority of our pads in here. That's the way we're gonna go with Charles's for now. And you can see mine is set up exactly like that, although I already have my front and back pads attached. Okay? So next, we don't have to change out the ratchet system because this one is my preferred system. Now, next is what I call my bridge system, okay? I have found an FMA version, and from what I can tell, there is not a difference in the way that this is designed. It may be put together by a different factory. It may not. It also just doesn't say Agilite here. Everything is exactly the same, and it works incredibly well. This is not, I mean, this is something that you want to be pretty good quality, but the way this locks in, I have no doubts that this thing will suit the needs for a third of the price. I am getting these off of eBay for about $30. Bridge is now attached. So this is awesome guys. It's got a little back system here, a little pouch. This is where you would put your counterweight. So in mine, I found some orange ones. Of course, I've got these two little mini counterweight batteries. These are basically just little anchor batteries that I can run my phone, my Psyonix camera on, they give me enough weight combined with the CR123 batteries that I have in the back. Also, all this extra weight with the lights, even a patch could add a little bit of weight, I guess. This keeps my system pretty well balanced with either the RNVGs or the really heavy psionics on the front of it. The next thing we did here, we got a G24 mount. So this costs about 90 bucks shipped off eBay. Now, it is obviously a knockoff version as well, but I have been putting some work with these. So all three of these now have multiple range uses and they lock perfectly into place. So you have one thing I would say that's different I need to point out. The one Charles has here actually has a removable shroud. So you could actually put a nicer like Wilcock shroud in this place if you wanted to swap out and go a little bit more expensive into this. But from what I'm seeing this mount works just fine. The one on mine is actually molded into the plastic like the real Ops Core. I think it's the carbon uh, bump helmet. So that one is actually molded into the plastic. You will see a lot of different airsoft and knockoff bumps that have the removable shroud now. So we're going to tighten this in. It just kind of slips into the top, pulls down. You put your locking tab in and boom. So locked right into place, picks right up. The next thing I highly recommend is the thigh rim very arc. So this is meant to attach into any arc system, arc rail system. And what this does is it slides into place here. We like to hook this into the front spot because you might have a earmuff like attachment that you would like to hook up to this rail as well. So this is similar to me to what a max, I think it's a max E mount is. Uh, my buddy Chase has one of those. It is actually a metal mount that replaces the middle body of your light. This has just the normal Picatinny rail attachment that it comes with from the factory. Now this is actually a knockoff Surefire as well. Surefire 300V I believe is what this is. So it has both a white light and an IR attachment on this too. So $67 for this light versus I believe the retail $360 for this light. But back to the mount. So the maxi mount, the only difference I can find that the maxi mount provides, other than it being made out of metal instead of plastic, is that the maxi mount is actually going to give you a little bit of a cant with it as well. So not only will it fully rotate around, but it can also come out like this. What I have found out 
using this regularly at the range. We flip our night vision off uh, or look underneath and we can really quickly shine our light, white light down and see what is going on with a malfunction or something or something wrong with the camera. What is really neat about this very arc system is it can give you full 360 motion with your light. Now, one thing you will have to be wary of is if you have ear attachment here, it may not let the big body part in the front follow all the way through around, which for me is perfectly fine because the most play I need is either up for an umbrella effect of IR in a really dark room or down at an angle to see what is going on on my hands. The very arc mount is about 30 bucks off of eBay right now or on their website. I think there's a little shipping maybe involved in both, but these are amazing quality and all you have to do if they get loose is just tighten them a little bit with the little Allen, Allen wrench system behind the light. So really important piece of my kit. I really like having this because of the flexibility it gives me with my light. I can do room clearing stuff. I can do house clearing stuff in my basement. And then I can obviously read a book, read a map, or see what is going on down in my hands. So all that I don't have to worry about having some extra thing attached. Uh, that's why I like this because it goes from both IR to white for me. So we have a mount, we have a light, because you kind of need this with your psionics cameras if you're really dark outside. We have your bridge to attach everything else, your counterweight, your retention system, uh, your strobes, all that good stuff. We have way to carry extra batteries. We have a retention system on our head that fits really well. So really, now you're only missing your night vision or your extras. So all that's gonna be up to you guys, the way you customize your helmet and give it your flair, your vibe. Um, as you can see, I definitely go full OP vibe on everything I do. So we have our new goon patch here uh, with the OP orange. I got, of course got my RR OP tag that somebody had given me a long time ago on my main helmet. And then I like the cost of defense retention system for my night vision. So this comes with basically three cords like this. They've got really nice clips that's got some shrink wrap built around them. And it comes in a really nice Velcro Cadora pouch that sits perfectly on top of that bridge. And it even has two extra battery spots built into it. He's got a ton of different colors. These are one of the more expensive pieces on here. I think this is right, uh, running at about $57, but it's American made, great quality, and worth every penny over there at Cost of Defense. So I will also link all the extra stuff that I put on my pat or on my helmet here from the strobes I got, the retention system, the mounts. We ended up buying some extra Velcro when we spray, spray painted this helmet because when I did spray paint, I got a lot of a little bit on the old tan Velcro. This was an FDE helmet at one time, so you can see on the inside it's got some tan to it, as well as the tan strap. I would like to find the black version of this and swap out, but it doesn't bother me because it's also at night and nobody's really paying attention to what color my chin strap is at the range. Awesome, awesome way to get you a really cheap helmet set up for the range to where you do not have to drop instantly two grand on a helmet system. This is a never ending rabbit hole, guys. I tell you what, since I've got into night vision, I've spent more money on stuff than I could ever imagine, including the extra ammo I'm wanting to shoot because it's so much fun. I am still having a hard time conserving ammo when I'm at the range during this pandemic. <laughs> now, obviously everybody's personal preferences are different, but I think this is a really good budget helmet setup for the price. And when we think about everything all together here, this is what it comes down to. Bump helmet, 60 bucks. Bridge, 30 bucks. Cloud pad system, 60 bucks. Mount, 90 bucks. Light, 70 bucks. Very art, 30 bucks. Cost of defense, 60 bucks. Strobe, 40 bucks. Color strobe, 15 bucks. For a grand total of around $500. That is less than what you can buy the real version of this Ops Core, not of this Ops Core helmet, just for the helmet itself without any attachments. When we go into the full-on retail price of what all this stuff is in the real version, we are well over $1,500, if not $2,000. So we found a way to cut 75% of the cost off when it comes to trying to find the best budget options out there for your night vision setup. Guys, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, leave a comment down below. Hit that subscribe button and share with your friends. This was kind of a different video for us, but it was a lot of fun to make, and I'm all about trying to save you and your wallet a little bit of money. Stay alert, stay alive, and get yourself
put that in the bag. So am I supposed to be getting B-roll of you taking a photo of yourself? <laughs> Is it creating the strobe effect? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>